In this video, we're going to take a look at the problem rephrased from problem 1 in IMO 1986. It's to show that we cannot find any natural number n such that 2n-1, 5n-1, and 13n-1 are all perfect squares at the same time. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. In this video, I'm going to show two solutions. The first one is kind of more um, standard. So to show the statement, I'm going to assume the contrary. So that means I'm going to do a proof by contradiction. So I'm going to start with assuming the opposite of the statement, which is that I can actually find a natural number n such that these three numbers are really all perfect squares at the same time. Now I'm going to see what would happen in that case. So if there is some natural number n such that these three numbers are all perfect squares, Then in particular, 2n minus 1 must be a perfect square, right? Then this number is odd. So that means 2n minus 1 must be congruent to 1 mod 4. Recalling that any perfect square, say um, a squared, when I divide it by 4, the remainder must be either 0 or 1. If a, the base itself, is an even number, then when it's squared, it's a multiple of 4. Otherwise, if a is odd, then when it's squared, okay, the squares number is, odd, is of course odd, but if I divide by 4, then the remainder is, can only be 1. It cannot be, like, cannot be 3. So these are the only two possible cases. So now because we have an odd perfect squared, that means this number must be congruent to 1 mod 4. Now I can solve this uh, congruence equation and I get that n must be odd because this number 2n, when it's divided by 4, the remainder must be 2. So that when it's, minus, when it's subtracted by 1, the remainder will become 1. Now because an even number is not multiple of 4, that means this n must be an odd number as well. And I'm going to let this 2n minus 1, given that it's a square of an odd number, to be 2a plus 1 whole squared. 2a plus 1 is kind of a general form to represent an odd number, some integer, some non negative integer a. Now I'm going to simplify it a bit. So, expand the right-hand side and simplify, making n the subject. I have n to be equal to 2a squared plus 2a plus 1. Now, with this expression, I can rewrite 5n minus 1 and 13n minus 1. We have, actually, uh, we have already assumed that all three numbers are natural not natural, but all perfect squares. So 5n minus 1, that particular expression must also be perfect squared. Now it's actually 10a squared plus 10a plus 4, while 13n minus 1 equals 26a squared plus 26a plus 12. And I'm going to further factorize it, well not really uh, factorizing the whole expression but just the first two and I get 10a times a plus 1 added by 4 while the other one will become 26a multiplied by a plus 1 plus 12. Now notice this a times a plus 1 
must always be an even number. We can show this by dividing a into two um, possibilities. Well, for example, if a is odd, then a plus 1 will be even. Otherwise, if a is even, then of course a times a plus 1 must be even as well. So regardless um, of the parity of A, we must have that um, A times A plus 1, the expression highlighted in yellow, must be even number. Now, if this even number is multiplied by either 10 or 26, we'll also get a multiple of 4. So that means these two expressions are both multiples of 4. And given that it's a perfect square, I can let these expressions to be 4b squared, 4c squared, respectively. Again, non-negative integers. Now, given that I'm going to solve some, um, I'm going to simplify these two expressions. A very effective way to proceed is to make a times a plus 1, the yellow expression, to be the subject. So I can equate b and c, b expression about b and c very quickly. So rewriting, I have a times a plus 1 to be on one hand equal to 4b squared minus 4 over 10. And on the other hand, is equal to 4c squared minus 12 over 26. So now we know that these two expressions must be equal. So simplify. I have b squared, 2b squared minus 2 over 5 equals 2c squared minus 6 over 13. That's simplifying um, expressions on, on both sides itself, then I'm going to divide 2 by both sides. Divide both sides by 2. So I have b squared minus 1 over 5 equals c squared minus 3 over 13. So multiply uh, the, con the denominators to both sides. And I have 5 c, c squared minus 13 b squared equals 2. However, we can quickly see that this equation has actually no solutions because in a very simple um, operation by taking mod 4 on both sides, I have c squared minus b squared because the coefficients 5 and 13 are both 1 mod 4 and the right-hand side is still congruent to 2 mod 4. But we know that our perfect squared must either be 0 or 1 mod 4, and there's no way that we can have difference of squares to be congruent to 2 mod 4. So no solution. So this is actually a contradiction, contradicting the assumption that all three numbers are perfect squares. So we have achieved our goal, and the statement has been proved. So this is the first solution. To understand why there is a second solution, we have to first look back to the original statement in the IMO. It actually says that this n is not equal to 2, 5, not 13. So it's actually very natural for us to try what will happen when n is equal to 2, 5, 13, so to get some kind of um, motivation. So when n is 2, then 2 n minus 1 is 3, 5 n minus 1 is 9, and 13 n minus 1 is 25. So 
Only this number is not perfect square, while the other two are also perfect squares. We can do the same for n equals 5 and 13. And the values are 9, 24, and 64. Over 13, I have 25, 64, and 168. Now notice that this statement will still hold when n is equal to 2, 5, or 13. So that is, this is the reason that I re kind of rephrase this problem when I take this video. But notice that they are actually very close cases. Very close, not really having all perfect squares, but we have two out of three. These numbers are perfect squares. Now, when I look at these numbers, I notice that 24 and 168 are actually very close in becoming a perfect square, not only because it's a perfect square minus one, but they are actually or multiples of 4, multiples of 8, but when I test the divisibility of 16, it's very close, it's congruent to 8 mod 16. Now this motivates me to the second solution, which is to test mod 16 on these three numbers. So when a perfect square is divided by 16, the remainder can possibly be 0 squared is 0 mod 16, 1 square is 1 mod 16, 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9. Now when it comes to 4 squared mod 16, then we get back to 0. When it's 5 squared mod 16, and it's five, and it's, and it's nine congruent to nine mod sixteen. Six squared is congruent to four mod sixteen. Seven squared is congruent to one mod sixteen. And for eight squared, we go back to zero again. Now notice that for further values, say nine squared, and it's just congruent to minus seven whole squared mod sixteen. And that is just 7 squared mod 16. So that means we, don't ha we do not have to test anymore because the values are just going to repeat itself. So that means a perfect square can only be 0, 1, 4, 9 mod 16. So this is very useful because by squaring, we have eliminated from 16 possible values to only 4 possible values. And in particular, notice that we cannot have a perfect squared to be congruent to 8 mod 16. So now, if 2n minus 1 is to be a perfect squared, that means I'm doing a proof by contradiction again. then 2n minus 1 can only be 1 or 9 mod 16. I have even eliminated the case, the case 0 and 4 because this number is an odd number. So solving, we have 2n to be congruent to either 2 or 10 mod 16. And finally, by testing, we know that n can be 1 9 for the case 2 mod 16 and 5 13 for the case 10 mod 16. Now, in this case, 5a minus 1 will be either 4, 5 times 9, 45 minus 1, and that's 12. 25 times 5, 25 minus 1 is 24, so that's 8 mod 16. Finally, we have 0 mod 16. So from this, I can already cross out 12 and 8. This is not possible. Say, for example, when n is 9 or 5 mod 16, then 5n minus 1 cannot be a perfect squared. So these cases can be eliminated. 
finally for 13, 13 and minus 1, it can be either 12, 1 times 13 minus 1, which is 12, 13 times 13 minus 1 is 8 again. And I can eliminate these two as well. So by considering mod 16, we know that we would definitely not have all three numbers to perfect squares. And so that's the second proof to our problem.